All right, Red Star and Monaco just concluded with Monaco winning 4-1. That is the end of Red Star's Europa League journey. Uh, no Conference League, so all they really have left is a, the Serbian Domestic League and uh, the Cup. So kind of a bitter, sour taste in our mouths. Um, you know, not advancing to, to any of the competition, I guess, so to say. Like no Europa League, no Conference League. And um, yeah, I think today Monaco just played better first half. I thought that we came out a lot better in the second half. And when you take a look at all the chances created at the end of the day, I think the uh, appropriate team won the match today. And I just think that there's matches that we played earlier in the group stage that we had to do a lot better in. And we didn't. I think that ultimately cost us. I don't know if... Because the group was so tightly contested i don't know if saying that it never really should have came down to the last match day is the right thing to say but uh, i think we could have helped ourselves out a lot if we had picked up uh points in in some of our previous matches but um starting from the starting lineup starting from the starting lineup i guess today uh pretty very offensive so you had mitrovic you had bukari on the wings you had kata ivanic kanga persic uh basically all guns blazing from uh milovic and i really like that from him i'm not into that whole let's try to play a 4-2-3-1 by forcing players to play in the defensive midfield position when we don't really have any of those players um in our team like kanga is a defensive midfielder but he doesn't have very many defensive characteristics if you stuck sunich there uh, he also, that's not his natural position. Like he recently started playing that position. He was a right winger before or left winger, whatever the case may be. But, you know, you just be forcing someone into that position with Sonogo out. Um, I think that was, I think this was the right move to do. And I, it was more of a 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, uh, formation. And the match didn't start off well, fifth minute right away. Uh, Folland scores the goal where Milan Borian kind of comes out to punch the ball, completely misses it. He just completely mistimed it uh came up late and you're behind in the fifth minute of play and that just kind of drains your team right away um i think that again giving up a goal that early is never a good thing to do especially away especially in a match that you need to win uh 24th minute again full end great chance milunovic blocks the shot 27th minute full end scores uh his second goal which milunovic again for a guy who's usually safety first just clears it out. He tries to head the ball to Rodic, who is also in the 18-yard box. And it just gets cut off. And, you know, Folland scores a goal where Borian really has nothing. There's nothing that we could really do. Uh, I just thought it was, again, from a guy who's usually safety first, I thought this was a very bad mistake from him. Uh, I don't think any of the back line played particularly well today. Uh, it felt like we were in quicksand, to tell you the truth especially in the first half, um, just Monaco was just faster and better. And it seems like every time they got anywhere near our 18 yard box, they created a chance. They either created a chance or got a, a corner kick out of it or, or whatever the case may be. And we just couldn't get into any sort of rhythm in the first half. The second half, Mitrovic comes off who didn't play well at all. And then Sunic goes on. So I think we shifted more to maybe like a 4-2-3-1 at this point. Um, you know, the third goal, Katai loses the ball. Uh, Golovin, I believe, was the one who stole it. Or no, sorry. Yes, Golovin was the one who stole the ball. No, sorry. It was someone else from, from Monaco. I can't remember who it was. And Golovin beat Rakovic, kind of had a shot on that, and Rodic just tucked it in the zone net. So 3-0 uh, at that point. Also, one of Rodic's, I think, worst matches for Red Star. I really didn't think he was that good today. Uh, and that's honestly the case with a lot of the guys, but um, just losing, cut that losing the ball in like the middle of the pitch where you really can't lose the ball. Uh, just, just awful. Uh, kind of careless at the same time. And he's been completely out of form for the last like three or four months. Uh, the last time he played, even when he scored against Fenwitz Vodrush, I don't think he was particularly good that night. Um, but yeah, uh, 54th minute, Kanga penalty. This is when Katai and, and Ivanich kind of worked their magic a little bit. Uh, Ivanich being brought down, uh, clear penalty. Uh, Kanga slotted it into the net. 
scored his third goal of the Europa League. And it's kind of like a game on almost to where I think th some of the offensive play kind of shifted into Red Star for probably the first time in the match. Uh, I think up until the uh, Kanga scored in the 54th minute. So I think the first 53 minutes were very Monaco offensively based, so to say. And I think from the about 54th to maybe the 70th was when Red Star kind of um even until the 80th minute uh where red star had some chances so uh petri scores a goal in 68 this allowed because of a offside which was the correct call he was offside by maybe half a meter or so maybe even less but uh the, the right decision he was offside it was a nice goal too i think it was kangwa who had put him put him through uh 81st again a really good chance from from ivanich from the left side Try to curl it into the goalkeeper's uh, left-hand corner. Just missed the far post. And, you know, you're kind of wondering if the Pesic goal is allowed. It is an offside, you know, 3-2. What would have happened in the rest of the match? But um, 87th, Fulham gets his hat trick. Again, uh, poorly set up. Uh, the transition back to defending wasn't very good yet again. It just felt like when Monaco wanted to score in this match, they did. And we had to really, really work hard for everything that we that we were that we kind of earned in this match. Like we really had to work hard in the pitch, trying to get the ball back, trying to build up some sort of play. Which um, again, in the second half, I think was a lot better in the first half, which doesn't tell you much. I don't think we were. I don't think we were even. If there's anything worse than poor, that's what we were in the first half. We just didn't create anything. Um, and, you know, one of the points I take away from this match is that, you know, Red Star looked a little better or a lot better with Katai off the pitch. Now, whether that's because with Katai, when Katai goes off, we change how we play. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the formation shift. So I think what was more of a 4-2-3-1 uh, when Katai did go off with Sunich and Katai playing uh, defensive midfielders. Uh, again, I said Rodic is probably worst game in a, in a Red Star kit. Uh, and again, Monaco just faster and better when they wanted to be. And like I said, just felt like they could score goals whenever they wanted to. Uh, not seeing Miatovic, I think, was a little bit disappointing because we go with we went with, you know, we threw on Ben, who's more of a veteran player. Like I understand, he's been the best foreign player we've ever had, but he's it's probably been two years too long that we've kept him at the club. Uh, and I think we should have gone with uh, Miatovic at some point or thrown on someone younger to, to get some experience like a Stankovic or something uh because at 3-1 we're in the 85th minute we're not going to get much of anything going forward so and we have no chance to win the match so it would have been nice to get some younger players I think more minutes I think it would have been great if we went to the conference league honestly if if you told me that in this match you can either have you know Europa League playoff round or whatever it is or Conference League, I would have taken Conference League. I think the Europa League playoff round, you're going to get the third place team from Champions League. It's going to be a very good team with a large budget, team that's probably worth six, seven times more than us. Probably going to get beat anyways. Conference League, you're probably a seeded team. I think that's how it works. You're a seeded team, so you're going to get a weaker opponent. Maybe you're going to get past one more round, maybe two. You never know, but um, I think... This is like the worst case scenario where you bow out out of European competition altogether. It would have been nice to, like I said, to have gone to Conference League. Uh, that wasn't the case. And like I said, when you look back at some of the matches, you know, where we could have got points, um, we had to do better. I think Monaco's first game, first match of the, of the um, group stage, I think we had to do a lot better there. We had... You know, a nil-nil draw until the 84th, 85th minute. And then we can see this very stupid penalty. We play very poor against Trabzonspor away. Um, Ferenc Vardas, a team that we beat 4-1 at home, we lose to away. And it's just, we could have clawed back and then got at least another four or five points. I mean, I don't think we would have finished this group stage undefeated, but we could have at least got another, at least another three uh, I think from from the games that we you know didn't play very well, and I think this is you know a learning experience going forward. I understand the manager shift kind of out of nowhere. Uh, truth be told, I completely understand that you get a new manager who has a different philosophy than the previous guy. Um, maybe a little bit tougher on his players, I would say, than Stankovic was. 
Um, so it's like a whole whole shift in mentality all at once. But I mean, they're professionals. They have to kind of learn to deal with it and what have happened at some point or another. So um, I think the most important now is winning the Serbian League and getting the automatic bid uh, to the Champions League for, for next year and obviously doing well in the Cup to where we can at least win win a double this season. Obviously, a disappointing Europa League. When you, when I looked at the um, you know the group at the start of the the competition, I would have said we could finish you know top three for sure, maybe even top two. And again, there was a lot of matches where Ferenc Vardas were I think outstanding. A lot of people had them finishing bottom of the league or bottom of the group, yet they finished first. So you know it's about taking your chances, scoring timely goals and. Uh, I think that's what they did, especially when I look at the Monaco game. Like they scored, when they beat Monaco, they scored in the, I believe it was the 80th minute to win it. And when they drew Monaco in the last round, which was the fifth round, uh, they scored the equalizer in the 81st. So they won it in the 80th, they scored the equalizer in the 81st. So it's kind of what you do uh, with your chances.